Hi again. So, from the age of 7 to about 11, I lived with my mom and my sister in a small country town in Victoria, Australia. So that's the south of Australia, where it gets very hot in summer and kind of cold in winter. In the main street of our town, it's a small town, the biggest church was, and probably still is, the Anglican Church. My mom's family was Anglican. I think my mom's mom, my grandmother who passed away quite a long time ago, was really the only person who went to church. Oh, and my uncle, who died just last week. He, that's a different story. He was a... Uh, I guess you would, could call him simple. He was um, a little... The word, I can't think of the right word, the old-fashioned word, which is probably not current, is retarded. But he was, um, <coughs> he lived a full life, he died at 78. His, one of his favourite things actually was going to church because he loved hymns. He used to play the organ, he could play any musical instrument. Anyway back to my story. So the biggest church in our town was the Anglican Church and when I was about eight or nine a new family came into the church. The father was the priest and there was the mom and they had about seven boys. And they came from the Solomon Islands. Thinking back on it now, I guess they must have been recruited to come into a church that needed a minister in a country town. Um, I think they did come from the Solomon Islands at that time as well. So they came to visit. They came to visit our house. They came to see my mum. And I don't remember, because my mum was a single mum. We'd left out my dad. Possibly it was after that that we started attending Sunday school. I guess they were out recruiting or perhaps she was getting some help from the church. I'm not sure. But, anyway, we used to go to Sunday school, sometimes. The way my mum tells it is that I was happy to go, but my sister said that she would go if mum would drive us, because otherwise we would walk. What I remember about Sunday school was, it was in a different building, perhaps next to the church, and we would go there and listen to stories and do colouring and drawing pictures. The, really the only two stories I recall from Sunday school. And one of them comes with the song that I don't remember so I'm not going to sing it. But it was the one about building your house on the rock and not on the sand. I think as an eight or nine year old child I didn't understand the allegorical or the parable to the story. I really just understood the practical thing of, yeah, don't build your house on the sand because it's going to wash away. Yeah, so you build a house on a rock. But I was of thinking, practical thinking, how can you build a house on a rock? That seems difficult. How are you going to put the foundation in? I don't know. Okay, and the other one is Noah's Ark. Always my favorite Bible story. Noah, knowing the flood's going to come, nobody believes him, spends ages and ages and ages as the village crazy man building a huge boat for him and his family and whoever else would come and all the animals two of each and then when nobody else comes they don't believe him and then they want to get in at the last minute probably well I think they didn't want to come anyway so everyone else dies and eventually they find land when a bird comes back with a olive twig in its mouth somehow or other this got changed into a symbol for peace, the olive branch, but 
that's not a symbol for peace. That's really a symbol for salvation. Hooray, there's land. Yeah. Uh, apparently, Jewish people see the symbolism of a rainbow as not such a positive thing, unlike everyone else, because the rainbow came, I think, after the flood. The first rainbow came, and to the Jewish people, it's a reminder of the flood, and uh, God did promise that he would never destroy everyone like that again. So that's the symbolism of the rainbow. Of course, I didn't know that at the time. That's about it for Sunday school. At the end of Sunday school, we would normally go into church and sit at the back and listen to the rest of the goings on. The priest, priest, Anglican I think is called a priest. Anglican ministers can get married obviously. Talking and singing some hymns and this and that and then it would be finished and we go home. So I remember one day because this priest is from the Solomon Islands so he's a black man, um, an islander and I remember one day He's asking the people to pray and he says, "You, I'll close my brown eyes and you close your white eyes. I remember so distinctly. I remember thinking to myself, that's weird. I thought that is weird. All of our eyes are actually equally white. We all have the white part and then we all have either brown or blue kind of in the middle thought that's weird and kind of unnecessary. As a young child, I was somehow, and I don't know why, always aware of racism. And I was always aware of people when they were being racist. Um, I didn't know it's called racism. I just knew when people were being discriminatory. Didn't know that word either. It struck me as weird. It really kind of grated on me, I guess. I wondered, even at such a young age, I was thinking, what does he, does he think people are thinking that he's got brown eyes and we've got white eyes and I don't know. Anyway, that being that. Later on, probably when I was around 11, I remember saying to my mum that I didn't believe in God or something nonsense and I distinctly remember it was just a throwaway line I think and I distinctly remember my mum saying to me oh well, you, I think you might change your mind when it, you're a teenager and I thought what's she on about she doesn't remember saying that anyway it doesn't matter but when I was a kid I did used to pray at night time. I used to pray in a kind of a dear diary fashion. I'd sort of lie in bed or, you know, in, in movies and TV, you sort of meant to kneel next to your bed and put your hands together, but maybe I tried that once or twice, felt, felt weird, and just, so I just used to say to God, dear God, blah, 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 just kind of like a diary. I'm not sure I used to ask for anything, but I, I never prayed to Jesus and I remember thinking when I was a kid well if Jesus existed he was probably a pretty good guy but I never I was never a practicing Christian and I was never even though I grew up nominally Christian country as everybody does and you normally assimilate those things but mm, I didn't I prayed to God and then that's pretty indicative of many things to come uh, which happened later on in my religious slash spiritual journey I was going to say something but COVID brain took it away
God. I've asked my mum about God a couple of times, what she thinks. I think she believes in God, but she doesn't have any... She doesn't have any strong beliefs about that type of thing. No. I'm the only religious person in my family. But my family has a history of religiousness. My grandmother was a religious lady, not strict and I don't know how, if she went to church regularly, but she was still, and her father, I think, was um, a sort of lay preacher of some sort in England. Okay, so what I learned about, learned from Sunday school, a little bit of oddness, in the races, between the races, uh, about people making trade-offs, my sister, and my mum, about whether we'll go to Sunday school or not, and my mum didn't go to church, no, and Noah's Ark, I still love Noah's Ark. It's only recently, in fact, this year that I ever started hearing about people who call themselves Noahide, which is where they adhere to the seven principal commandments that are given to Gentiles. You have, if you divide people into Jews and Gentiles, then the Noahide are the righteous Gentiles, you can say. There's a there's the rules, kind of commandments that actually everybody are meant to keep, and they make sense like that as well. They're basically commandments that I think every religion has. So that's me in Sunday school, or when I went to high school, when I went to boarding school, we had to go to church every Sunday. <laughs> I do distinctly remember getting the bus on the weekend and the boys leering out the windows yelling at passers-by calling them peasants because we went to the local boarding school. <laughs> Eventually they stopped that and they built a temple hall in the school. Probably for that reason. <laughs> okay, thank you. Bye.